to what did we just watch? <laughs> the Dallas Mavericks punched their ticket to the Western Conference Finals with an absolute just dismantling of the Phoenix Suns in Phoenix in Game 7. Um, I'm going to spend probably more time talking about the Suns here than the Mavericks because I will do um, another video for like the Conference Finals previews probably either tomorrow night or um, Tuesday morning. So look for that around then. But this was this was about as ugly for the Phoenix Suns as it could have possibly been. Down by like 50 at one point in an elimination game seven at home where just nobody wanted to show up. Uh, Chris Paul... I mean, what can you say at this point? Seven times the man has blown a 2-0 series lead in the playoffs with, like, some really good teams. It's not just like he got there as an eight seed, they got lucky, and then they lost it. He's, this was the number one team in the league this year. This team lost 18 games <laughs> the whole year. And that's with Booker out of the lineup, CP3 out of the lineup, with this whole, like... Monty Williams just won Coach of the Year like a week ago, and it already feels like, was that really the right choice? Like, this that this was unbelievable. I could not believe what I was seeing. Luka Doncic came out and just immediately was looking to just rip the hearts out of the Suns, and the Suns were just, like, eager to, like, roll over and let it happen. Like... I don't know. It, after the game, uh, there was like a report that Chris Paul was seen um, heavily walking slowly, leaving the arena, um, and like a, a, a potential quad injury was at play here. No way. There's no way. This is like a, when LeBron had his hand in a cast uh, in the finals that one year and was like, I punched the wall. My hand's been broken this whole time. They got eliminated. The, the I think it was the Warriors won the title, and then it was like, yeah, I was so mad. I punched a wall in game one and my hand's been broken this whole time. I just never said anything like this reeks of that because they were down like 42 points in the third quarter here. And Chris Paul just like checked back into the game. Like come, you're not going on a 42 run to tie this thing up and like make it a game here. So if he was really nursing a quad injury, it's not that's that's not the smartest move. Um there's so many things to unpack about this game, though. So, Devin Booker in Game 5 uh, oversells the, the foul to make it look like a hard foul to, to play up to the crowd. Turns and he's caught on camera saying that's the Luka special. And it was basically just downhill from there. The Mavericks just absolutely dominate Game 6 in Dallas. Come back to Phoenix and just put on an even better performance on the road. Uh, led by Luka Doncic, Jalen Brunson, and Spencer Dinwiddie, who it felt like just could not miss. I think Dinwiddie was like 11 of 15, and Brunson and Luka were both like 11 and 19, something like that. But the three of them combined for 89 points. The Phoenix Suns scored 90 points in this game. The three of them almost outscored the Suns by themselves. Luka outscored the Suns, or he tied the Suns, in the first half, the Suns had 27 points at halftime. I just, I couldn't believe it. And it doesn't seem like Dallas did a whole lot. Like, I will say hats off to Jason Kidd. I, I am not a Jason Kidd fan. I did not really like him as a player. Don't like him really as a coach. But hats off to the man for the adjustments that he made throughout this series because there were a couple games where it looked like Phoenix was just going to right the ship and just bomb them out and it was going to be right on schedule like everyone thought. But one of the things that it looks like that he really put an emphasis on as far as the defense went was double teaming Booker, forcing Chris Paul to, to make these plays and these snap decisions and kind of do everything himself, which... Chris Paul, point guard, you would think that's fine. That's, you know, the Suns can live with it. But for whatever reason, Chris Paul just looked, just looked different. He looked tired. He looked old. He looked worn down. People were wondering if he was hurt. Like, I'm sure there's going to be all sorts of think pieces and things written about him now. And got to be honest, I don't know how good I feel now 
about the prospect of the Suns paying him $30.8 million in 2024. It's just, if this is what it's going to be, if he's going to wear down as the season goes on, or if it's going to be these nagging injuries that are not mentioned until the end of the season, but then it's like, well, then why was he playing if he was hurt? So the, the Phoenix is really putting themselves in an interesting spot here. Uh, you have that factor to it. Devin Booker uh, goes for 11 points. Terrible shooting. He had, saw double teams almost the whole night. But something that this the Mavericks did that I noticed watching all the highlights back is they really took away the mid-range. And Chris Paul and Devin Booker are probably the two of the best shooters not named DeMar DeRozan from the mid-range. So by taking that away, it kind of just completely destroyed what they wanted to do. They were looking to, you know, the role players, Landry Shamit, Jay Crowder, Mikhail Bridges. They were looking to all these guys to kind of step up and the shots just weren't falling. But cp3 and devin booker didn't have the luxury of like okay then i'm just gonna get to my spot and get a bucket because we need it something that they both did throughout this entire season it was taken away from them and we just basically watched them not know how to process it not know how to handle it and one name i did not mention because who knows what's going to happen with this now is deandre ayton who played 17 minutes in this game and then just didn't play at all in the fourth quarter. Like, yes, it was a 40-point game, but Chris Paul was in there, Devin Booker was in there, but no DeAndre Ayton. Played 17 minutes, and when asked about it after the game, uh, Monty Williams got, like, upset, really, for, like, the first time. I've never seen him get upset like this, but he was like, it's an internal thing. Like, the report, I don't know how true this is, but the report is that he... Uh, that Monty Williams asked DeAndre Ayton, do you even want to play anymore? And DeAndre Ayton said, nope. And so Monty Williams said, go get comfortable on the bench there, buddy. And ugh, a lot of things make that a terrible, um, terrible look and a terrible moment for this all to happen. Uh, one thing that makes it terrible is uh, he can accept qualifying offers next uh, this offseason from any teams. Uh, he's going to be looking for a max contract. Phoenix is notoriously cheap. Uh, Robert Sarver is one of the cheapest owners in the league. So any reason he has to not give DeAndre Ayton a max, he's probably going to cite and use. Um, so that could be it for DeAndre Ayton as a son. Not the best look. Uh, and then on top of that, the Suns took DeAndre Ayton first in a draft that also happened to feature... <sighs> Who was it? Luka Doncic going third to Dallas. So this had a little bit of like an FU edge to it from Luka where it's like, this team did not take me. I was the best player in this draft. I'm going to just come out here and go nuts. Uh, he had that quote after game five where he said like, you know, people talk louder when they're winning, something like that. And odd, fair play to him, man. He backed it up. He whooped their asses tonight. And it was unbelievable to watch. This was like the best team in the league just being made to look like a rec league team on a Tuesday night. Like this was brutal. I couldn't believe what I was seeing with some of those scores. And I mean, hats off to him. Like I said, I don't know that they're going to want, you know, I don't know how attractive this looks now like the the structure of this team going forward like phoenix is going to be forced to make a lot of decisions and have a, a lot of hard conversations a lot faster than i think anyone you know realized because now deandre ayton's a question mark javel mcgee and bismack biombo who both played more minutes than deandre ayton uh are coming off of the books you have bridges paul and um booker signed to extensions but like like I said, is Chris Paul, you know, how comfortable do you feel paying him close to $31 million a year as he just gets older and who knows if this is what it's going to be? It's just, it's terrible. And the funniest thing about this is this game and this loss makes you forget that the Celtics beat the Bucks by 28 points earlier because that didn't feel like this. Like, I don't know how to explain it. So hopefully this makes sense if you watched both games, but like, the Bucks did not stop trying. Giannis did not stop trying. Like, they just couldn't hit shots. The Celtics' defense was that good. The Bucks' shooters were that cold. 
and that's just kind of how it went. They we watched these teams go back and forth this whole series. No one gave anyone an inch, and it was just gritty performances after gritty performances. Like yes, the Bucks are gonna have some decisions to make, um, and like things like you know trading away Dante Divincenzo for Serge Ibaka probably not the best decision considering he was a a DNP coach's decision tonight in the biggest game and DiVincenzo would have certainly been playing but like to me the the only buck that really didn't try or maybe like just stopped trying was Mike Budenholzer like he just stuck with his rotation stuck with his plans this is what we're gonna do and just went with it like Grayson Allen was not hitting shots Grayson Allen did not hit a three tonight he took six of them missed all of them is a liability on defense and he still played like 22 23 minutes with Javon Carter sitting on the bench and that's not to say Javon Carter would have been like this magical cure-all but like he's a pretty hard-nosed defender and I'd, I'd like to see a backcourt of him and Drew Holiday maybe lightening the load a bit for that front court so Giannis doesn't have to look absolutely gassed on both ends of the court you're not asking Brooke Lopez on a surgically repaired back to protect the rim as much like it just, you know, it's one of those things where, like, this slight adjustment, just trying, you have seven games to try something different, and you just run the same things. Like, you're just kind of, you're asking your players to do too much, and they were able to do it last year and cover a lot of these weird rotation decisions, but not having Chris Middleton and not having the same wing depth, they just kind of, they had no other choice. They did what they could. They were, like, the person plugging all the holes in the dam. But... I say that to just to say, like, that felt completely different. Like, that felt like a team that went down fighting. They lost by 28 because Boston hit more threes in a game than has ever happened in a playoff game seven before. But that's going to happen. It felt like a good Boston team beat a good Milwaukee team, and that's that. I believe when they all said afterwards they have tons of respect for each other. Like, I believe it all. That it was a fair play. Boston won that series. Milwaukee put up a fight as the defending champion, and that was that. This Dallas Suns thing is a completely different thing because this is the best team in the league just rolling over at home. Luka came out, scored like eight straight points to start the game, was getting people involved. It felt like him and Dinwiddie just couldn't miss early, and Phoenix just never recovered. Like That fourth quarter started, and those fans were heading to the exits because they knew that was it. And that's a tough spot. That's a tough spot to be in. So I don't know what this means. Um, I shudder to think what this is going to mean for the Suns. I feel bad for Suns fans. I think this is another reminder that um, be careful with that trash talk. That's, that's the last thing I'll say is be careful with that trash talk. Because we got a lot of the Luka special. There was a lot of CP3 and Devin Booker joking about attacking Luka on defense. And all these things early in the series. I think the fans even chanted Suns in four at one point. I think in game one. Gotta be careful what you wish for, man. And just hats off to Luka. Um, I'll talk more about the Mavericks and, and the Warriors and the Heat and the Celtics. Um, in another video, I just really wanted to talk about this the Suns collapse here. Not like in the game was a collapse, just like the whole team just imploded. And I, I have not seen something like that in a long time. I've been trying to think, like, when have I seen this before? And I, I cannot remember the last time. And I know it's probably happened, and I just can't think of it. But this was bad. This was, like, people, if this is, like, the last time this Suns team gets this far... This is such a damning thing. Like, this is just one more stamp on the on the legacy of Chris Paul that says he can't do it in big games. This is a, a very bad blemish on DeAndre Ayton's time with the Suns. If it comes to an end and he and the team go out like this with him kind of just in a spat with one of the most, like, well-liked and respected coaches in the league uh, after getting dominated to a player that the, <laughs> that got drafted after Ayton... Um, and then Booker, you know, I, my friend said it best to me. He said, I don't ever want to see Devin Booker and Kobe Bryant's names in the same sentence unless it's something about how Devin Booker really liked Kobe and respected him because, like, that's been a popular comparison. But, like, I don't know if Kobe would have gone out like this 
just kind of just hoisting up shots and just like lackadaisically going on. But that's another discussion for another day. It's just, this is uh, the last thing I expected when, when, uh, the today started and I was excited about the prospect of two game sevens. I did not see this coming. So let me know your thoughts, please. Uh, Suns fans, I'm sorry. Uh, let me know your thoughts on, on the games, on both games, um, on the conference finals. Um, I'll get in more, more into that later. But thank you very much for watching. Uh, everyone have a good morning. Suns fans, try to have a good morning. And I'll be back.